In this video, we're going to take a look at the recently released GNOME 46. Let's go! Firstly, let's take a look at the improved apps. The Nautilus file manager got some major changes. It now has a new global search button in the sidebar that you can use to search the entire file system. Searching is also much faster, and you can click the Search in Current Folder button located next to the path bar to search the contents of the current folder. When copying files to other locations, instead of the progress indicator showing up as a circle in the toolbar, it is now located at the bottom of the sidebar, allowing you to see the progress of individual operations and which ones are still pending or have completed. Also, unlike previously, where you would notice a delay in Nautilus when switching between list and grid view, and the files would individually load up, now switching between list and grid view happens instantaneously without any delay. In Nautilus Preferences, you can now search for specific settings, and you can choose between showing simple or detailed date and time info about files. Also, finally, in the path bar, you can click on the name of the folder you're in, or the empty area to manually edit the file path. Starred files and folders will also be marked with a little star for easier identification, and more network devices now appear in the Other Locations section. Next, let's take a look at the Improved Settings app. The Online Accounts feature has been improved, now including support for Microsoft OneDrive, which will appear in the sidebar of Nautilus, allowing you to access your OneDrive alongside your local files if you log into Microsoft. Your default browser will be used for authentication instead of the generic web view, allowing other authentication methods like USB tokens. You can also use a WebDAV account to access your calendar, contacts, and files in GNOME apps that integrate with online accounts. And the Online Accounts section has been completely redesigned and now looks more modern. Due to these changes, there is no more Online Accounts page in the initial Setup Assistant. Now that we've covered Online Accounts, let's take a look at the rest of GNOME settings. There's a new Remote Desktop section with a Desktop Sharing and Remote Login page. If Remote Login is enabled, you can remotely log into your computer as long as no one else is currently using it. Settings has now been reorganized and is now easier to use. The Region and Language, Date and Time, Users, Remote Desktop, Secure Shell, and About sections have been grouped under one System section. And the Apps section has also gotten a redesign and includes settings for default apps and removable media. The touchpad section has gotten two new settings. The ability to choose if you want to right-click using two fingers, or the corner of the touchpad, and a toggle to enable or disable the touchpad while typing, which is very useful for gaming and some other things. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate these settings in this VM. In general, the Settings app has also been more polished with improved descriptions and tooltips, modernization and refinement, and more. The Appearance section also loads faster and has sharper previews. The Software Center now shows a Verified badge for flat packs that are verified by the official developers, and the preferences have been redesigned, there are better error messages, and there's a new keyboard shortcuts window. The Maps app got a new map style with dark mode support, some UI and routing improvements, and more. The floating zoom buttons have also moved to the bottom right corner. The Extensions app was redesigned with a cleaner list, making it easier to find and toggle installed extensions, and it has adaptivity between desktop and mobile layouts. Calendar app got a modernized UI and some performance improvements. 
The Contacts app now has the ability to import multiple vCard files simultaneously, and when importing contacts, the confirmation window will show the contact names. Now let's take a look at the system improvements. Notifications have been improved with headers to indicate which app the notification came from, and a button to expand or collapse notifications that are too large or contain an action button. Apps pinned to the dock can be launched with Super Key plus a number. For example, Super plus 1 to launch the first app in the dock, and Super plus Control plus a number to launch a new window of the specified app. The on-screen keyboard was also improved with automatic capitalization and new layouts for entering phone numbers, email addresses, and URLs. Also, tap to click is enabled by default. GNOME 46 has also gotten some under the hood improvements like better performance and lower resource usage, bug fixes, security improvements, rendering improvements including sharper app UIs and text, and clearer UIs with fractional scaling, and variable refresh rates have been added as an experimental feature, allowing for smoother video performance in some cases. To enable variable refresh rates, you can use the deconf editor to navigate to org slash gnome slash mutter slash experimental features, disable the default value, and add the custom value variable refresh rate. Then click the check mark to apply the changes, and then after rebooting, if you open the settings app and navigate to displays, you can set a variable refresh rate if supported by the monitor and GPU. There's also some accessibility improvements like more features in the Orca screen reader, a more usable high contrast mode, a toggle to show on and off symbols on switches, and more. Overall, GNOME 46 has many great features and improvements and will be shipping with popular distros soon. Subscribe if you like my content and join the Penguin Byte Discord community with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.